So, we're all familiar with this concept when it comes to art. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. That much is true. Now, the value of an artwork, when you have to actually pay dollars and cents or pounds and shillings, is trickier. Now, this digital collage has just fetched $69 million at Christie's. It's by Mike Winkleman, also known as Beeple. The sale price puts him in the company of only two other living artists, Jeff Koons and David Hockney. The difference is he created this image as an NFT, a non-fungible token. It's a blockchain token that can't be copied or forged. Oh, it can be... I can have a replica of it, but it can't be the original. The CEO of Christie says these tokens let digital artists enter the high-end market. It's very important to understand that this world, this art community, did exist before. But today, the NFT and the blockchain technology together give these artists a safer marketplace because their works, their digital works, can be proved as being unique and authentic through the blockchain technology. And that's why Christie's decided to connect with this uh, art community and the existing platforms to build this auction sale and to, uh, you know, reach this record price. Non-fungible tokens, and what are they and how could they be worth so much? Well, if something is fungible, it can be replaced by something equally and identical. A dollar bill is essentially the same as another. If something is non-fungible, it's unique, it's one of a kind. In the case of a people, it's a digital collage comprised of an artwork created every day over the past 13 years. Now, the NFT could be a GIF, or it could be music, or it could be a video clip. Anything digital authenticated by its creator using blockchain software. Jack Dorsey, the head of Twitter, is even looking to sell the first ever tweet as an NFT. Uh, the issue, of course, is can't anybody bother and, and copy it and paste it for free? Well, by turning into an NFT, it establishes its authenticity and its originality. And it's those two values that confer value. Selling these digital items opens new markets for the traditional auction houses. You heard from Christie's. Charles Stewart is the CEO of Sotheby's. Charles, Charlie, good to see you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Now, you, you've been pushing innovation a great deal in the way auctions are done. And during pandemic, you've seen considerably larger numbers of people digitally, uh, online, uh, in engaging. But is this a step too far, do you think? I mean, the NFT takes it into another league. Well, I, to me, Richard, it's the continuation of what we've been seeing over the last 12 months. The level of digital engagement of um, uh, new audiences coming into the, uh, to the art market has been something we've been seeing really now for the last 12 months. And the NFTs are in some way the latest uh, iteration of that. I think they're also evidence that the world will not go back exactly to how it was pre-pandemic. OK, so if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't go back to how it was, which is probably um, a good thing in many cases, what will that change look like in your industry? I mean, look, I'm never going to be able to afford a Monet. I'm not even going to be able to afford some of these NFTs. So tell me, how do you get someone like me to engage with Sotheby's? Well, one of the nice things for you, Richard, is that the Monets, I think, may look like great value compared to some of the NFTs that we've seen recently. So, um, as you say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, um, and we'll see how it develops. You know, I think it will be, a, uh, you'll see uh, the rise of this new um, category of art and audience for art. That's what's really exciting for me uh, to watch this rise of NFTs. Um, but at the same time, we're seeing enormous interest, you know, every day in our auction rooms. We sold a Botticelli uh, six weeks ago for $92 million here at Sotheby's. And so I think the physical art world and this NFT art world will exist uh, simultaneously. Um, and, you know, it bodes well for all categories. And if we look at the profile of the buyers, how, can, can, you, can you draw any um, trends, chains that you've seen from buyers pre-pandemic to post-pandemic? Are they willing to spend more? Are they willing to spend less? Are there more people engaged? What trends are you seeing? Sure. Well, the, the first thing I would say is that um, there's a much larger audience overall. And that was before this recent frenzy of NFTs. I should point out that NFTs have been around for some number of years. 
Um, it's only been on, you know, the, the broader uh, radar perhaps over the last few months, but they've been around for several years, and it's exciting to see them develop in this way. Um, but in terms of the overall audience, we're seeing a larger audience. We're also seeing a younger audience. And I think we're seeing the younger audience in part with this pivot to digital first engagement. That's very intuitive uh, for these younger audiences in terms of you know, how they want to engage with, um, with art, with their communities, their social life, and ultimately you know, the objects that they own. So uh, we'll see that trend continue for sure. What's going to be exciting about 2021, I think, is that we, we hope and expect to see the best of this digital first engagement with the return of more traditional physical experiences, which of course, uh, for physical art objects anyway, it's important to be able to be in front of them, to experience them with your friends and family and so on. Yeah, that will be tremendous. I mean, the, the auction, I, I, I still think there is no, I think there's no feeling quite like being in a room with lots of people who are willing to spend tens of millions and are battling it out between each other to give away f money that you and I could live on for the rest of our lives and beyond. <laughs> yes, I, I fully agree with you, and we can't wait for that moment. Uh, actually, I think this year, with hopefully the easing of restrictions and the easing of the pandemic, that will create an opportunity to reinvent some of these physical experiences uh, to make them as exciting, as glamorous, um, and also blending together the digital and the physical experiences in a, in a really you know, new, innovative, and exciting way. Charlie, uh, as always when I talk to you, I'm always, I'm always listening very closely to what you're saying, but I'm always looking very closely at what's behind you. And that blue number, that blue circle, is a rather nice little number. I, I guess it's going to set me back a bit if I want it. I'll definitely send you some information about the Damien Hurst uh, afterwards. There's a nice ruche. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but there's also quite a unique Shelby Ooh. Cobra sitting here that I can see you driving around town, Richard. How much? Go on, what's the reserve on it? Well, this is actually for private sale. You know, not everything we do is auction these days. Uh, we're actually really excited about this, but you'll have to contact me directly about the price on the car. Uh, I haven't got a garage, so I'll leave the car with you. <laughs> but that Damien Hurst, which I should have recognised, talk about Philistines and of, the, of the world's unite. That Damien Hurst, I've got my eye on. All right, good to see you, Charlie. Keep well, please. Um, and Likewise. Have a good Thank you.